everybody. <laughs> Except you. <laughs> so America continues to suffer from a tragic shortage of white racists. Oh, they have plenty of others, but we're running low on the pale faces. It's gotten so bad, our media bottom feeders have to keep making them up. In the latest fake smear, a hack at sports site Deadspin alleged that a child with his face painted in his football team colors was actually blackface. You know blackface, right? It's that thing only lefty celebs can get away with. Oh, and also Bugs Bunny. <laughs> Thank God that son of a bitch retired. <laughs> but with Deadspin, a funny thing happened. Instead of getting the approval that most woke media Karens generally bask in, the scumbag writer had to face the new community notes function of Elon Musk's ex. In record time, community notes showed the kid's full photo, not just the half painted black. And so the only thing this kid is guilty of is being adorable. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Instead of a young Klansman in training, we see a kid wearing the colors of his favorite team. And now, thanks to a made-up charge of blackface, the folks at Deadspin are guilty of eggface. <laughs> yeah, having egg on their face. I came up with that. Now, you would have thought that the Indian headdress the kid was wearing at a Chiefs game might have been the tip-off. Uh, but for whitey hater Karen Phillips, who just made himself the Jesse Smollett of sports journalism, it didn't matter. Because let's face it, this Karen knew what he was doing. He works for a sports website, for God's sake. He knows football fans often have their faces painted in team colors. It's only been in every beer commercial for the last 30 years. Still, the piece's headline claims the young fan was in blackface and doubling up on racism. Phillips added that, quote, this is what happens when you ban books, stand against critical race theory, and try to erase centuries of hate. You give future generations the ammunition they need to evolve and recreate racism better than before. Well, first of all, banning books wouldn't affect this nutbag, since all he can read are BLM protest signs. <laughs> Hell, there's enough hogwash in there to bathe Joy Behar. Oh. I know! I, would, I feel the same way. It's a lesson to us all. So yeah, a young kid wearing his favorite team colors recreates racism better than before? And accusing a child of that is how you're erasing hate, Karen? F you! You're causing hate with a false smear! But it gets worse for him and Deadspin. Apparently the kid's not only a big, chief, big Chiefs fan, He's actually Native American himself. The boy's mom confirmed it, and the kid's dad is reportedly a member of the Chumash tribe in California. I think that's the one Liz Warren is also a member of. <laughs> and the kid's granddad is reportedly on the governing board of the Chumash Indian Nation. Uh, I bet that kid's name is Painted One Sees You in Court. By the way, according to the National Parks website, the Chumash Indians engage in faced painting and their colors, red, black, and white. So is this an obvious case of an untalented attention whore realizing this is the only way he can gain notoriety? Sure, so let's give it to him. Karen, the only reason you have a byline is because you're a race baiter. No one would know you if not for that. And you exploited an innocent child to amplify your pathetic presence. Your stance isn't one of depth or of substance. It's just a vomit of robotic cliches stolen from another brainwashed clone. I hope this story follows you to the end of your very brief career. <laughs> now, sure, you can applaud. I'll take it. Gives me time to relax. Now, this isn't the first time a young kid's been called racist by the media. Last month, a middle schooler was suspended for wearing face paint in support of his school football team. That damn racism shortage again. Then there's the Covenant kids, who the media tried to turn into a Klan field rally, only to discover that they were wrong. But because back then, X was the lefty echo chamber Twitter, without the community notes and Elon, the kids had to sue to fix the record. And they did, and they won. Nick Sandman has so much money, he could have bought CNN. But then he'd be paying himself. <laughs> and yet, has the woke media learned anything other than how to replace George Floyd with Palestine? Here's Karen after being called out on X. Quote, for the idiots treating this as some harmless act because the other side was, of his face was painted red, I could make the argument that it makes even worse. <laughs> Y'all are the ones who hate Mexicans but wear sombreros on Cinco. I don't know what he's saying. 
<laughs> now, if you agree with that, <laughs> you might have a future at Deadspin, but actually, you probably won't, because there's no future at Deadspin. Their spin is dying. Deadspin has yet to issue an apology or a retraction, and that's because the sports media in general has lost its balls. The woke scared them, so they let the virus in and take over. And of course, they expected no blowback from their like-minded media allies. But have you checked ESPN's ratings lately? They're lower than Brian Stelter's book sales. <laughs> Never over. Yeah. I should have said balls. Lower than his balls. That would have been funnier. And weird because you would know. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> And look at Poor Sports Illustrated. Apparently, the rag had been publishing product reviews by authors who didn't exist and were written by AI. SI have since blamed that on a third-party company. But what do you expect from a once-great company who succumbed to this and this? Then there's ESPN, who've given us tons of woke moments, the on-air moment of silence to protest Florida's parental rights bill, the talking heads bashing players for refusing to wear pride patches, they even revived the debunked story about a noose in a NASCAR garage. And who can forget that they gave race baiter Jamal Hill a job? The bottom line, sports brands are zombie shells hollowed out by the woke. But now things may be changing. Thanks to the left's great Satan, Elon Musk, creating community notes, a kid's life won't be destroyed. See, Musk created a way to prevent small, false smears from taking root. He disabled the one weapon that the left so desperately embraced taking something out of context, sharing it with like-minded creeps, and letting it spread. Must kill that. No wonder they hate his guts. They should. Period. Let's welcome tonight's guest. No one can resist this former attorney's appeal, host of the <laughs> True Fox True Crime podcast, Emily Caballo. <laughs> Sadly, hobos offer him money. <laughs> Founder of the theloftusparty.com, Michael Loftus. <laughs> She's like saran wrap, thin, clingy, and can fit in a drawer. New York Times bestselling author and Fox News contributor, Cat Tip. <laughs> and he'll debate your points while dislocating your joints. New York Times bestselling author, comedian, and former NWA world champion, Tyrant. <laughs> You know, Michael, as a street person, a.k.a. hobo, transient, people often think you're in blackface when it's just soot, dirt, and grime. Yeah, <laughs> cleaning out chimneys for extra money. Yeah, I know, exactly, <laughs> sleeping under a dumpster. Uh, are you surprised that they doubled down on their claims? I, I think they have to because uh, the lawsuit is going to be so big. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's going to be so huge, and I, I just want to... Uh, uh, just applaud the parents. It's the way this is unfolding. It's beautiful. It's like uh, you ever seen those glitter bombs that the people leave on their porch? Yeah. Right. The, the, it's just a. It, it's, it's like a, uh, a an box Amazon that... box, but full of glitter. Somebody steals it and it blows up and makes a huge mess. That's what this feels like. Because mm -hmm. this dude from Deadspin had to be so excited. Oh, there's a white kid in blackface. Oh, and he's wearing a headdress, and he's doing the tomahawk chop. Yeah, stop the presses. Yeah. And then to find out, uh-oh, it's an Indian kid. Uh-oh, uh, his dad's a member of the tribe. Oh, his grandfather is one of the elders. It's just going to keep getting worse. I, I wanted to find out, like, oh, and his great-grandmother hand-carved the Underground Railroad <laughs> and, and was married to Harriet Tubman. I want it to get worse and worse and worse. Maybe it will. You know, Emily, you cheered for the Raiders back in your previous life. Uh, plenty of fans painted their faces at Raiders games. Can you believe that Deadspin didn't know of this trend? <laughs> and that the photos that they chose to publish were of only that one side of the kid. Yeah, um, yeah my, my issue with this, actually, the more that I think about it, the less I put any type of judgment, because I, I love to judge otherwise, but any type of sort of onus on, on that author, Karen Phillips, because everything he has ever written has been extremist, incendiary, race baiting, and absolute nonsense. So my issue is with the publisher. My issue is with the amplification process here that keeps giving him a voice so much louder than everyone else that has common sense that is trying to diffuse this absolute and utter unacceptable drivel that we are continue to be subjected to. And my issue is also with all of those decision makers who listen to that 
The NFL has now pledged $250 million over the course of 10 years to combat racism and put in the end zones not only things like play football, no sh but also things like, you know, we all, we all need this together and end racism as if that's gonna do anything. What would do something is stop giving people like Karen Phillips any platform. Shut him up and the race baiting would actually I don't want him, I don't want him to be shut up, Kat. If he shuts up, I run out of an A block for my show. <laughs> I mean, this guy has, we've now done three segments on this, two on the five. I think, I think he's on the Fox payroll, Kat. Yeah, I thought, yeah. <laughs> I, I just, I had no idea you could get paid to write articles about kids you don't like. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe this. I agree with Emily. I can't believe this was published because it the way he conducted himself was very much as if he were a, you know, drug-addled man on the train. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like that kid, something like that kid is an <laughs> asshole. Like somebody do something about that kid. People are like, "Hey man, leave the kid alone." Yeah. Oh yeah, well you hate Mexicans. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a published work. It blows my mind and it could have, it, he's probably thinking to himself, you know, how was I supposed to know that this kid was Native American? Well, you know, you're not supposed to write that about a kid. Yeah. <laughs> That's not a normal reaction. He was writing as if he was speaking truth to power in right. some way. And the power is like five years old. Oh, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so weird it, for a grown man to be going after a small but, elementary school at the oldest probably child. But you know what you, you, what you hit on here is that if you're talking about groups of people, it's not about the child, it's about the group he represents. So you can go after anybody, including a five-year-old child or however old he is. I can never tell the age of kids. Probably a bad thing. <laughs> no, I, I'm very, I am an expert. I am an actual expert at aging children. I count down the years to mine are 18. So I'm very good. But that's when the child support stops. So I'm, I'm like a mathematician. He's about six. Yeah. I, uh, I think you're all missing the, the point. And the ugliness of this is not just the idiot. Because you made a great point. You said the group. And it's the group that there's a certain group that you're allowed to do this to, mm -hmm. white people. You can be racist and horrible as you wanna be, as long as the group you're racist against is white people. He doesn't have to apologize. Yeah. He won't apologize. His publisher won't stop him. We see this all the time. Now they've gotten so desperate that now kids aren't off limits. They usually would go after adults. We just saw the story two weeks ago where a kid went to a high school football game and he put two black lines down his face and he was ex expelled and could never go to a game again because he wore a black face. They're so angry that, they're, that they're, they're slipping through their fingers. The difference is now is that white people are standing up. But here's what upset me. I don't care that he's Native American. Yeah. I don't care if that kid was so white he was from Norway, which yeah. I established last night. <laughs> He has every right to put on a headdress yeah. and dress up like his favorite player. Good point. And I'll just, and I'll, and I'll end it with this. I myself, my favorite basketball team is the Boston Celtics and their mascot's a leprechaun. And that's why I'm so kind to Greg all the time. <laughs> I am a little bit Irish. <laughs> Uh, I'm just thinking about my pot of gold. <laughs> All right, before we go, a quick reminder. I'll be in Albany, Albany, New York this Sunday, December 3rd, for the final stop on my book tour. Go to ggutfeld.com for ticket info. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.